Christ is in our midst. I greet all of you, the clergy, monastics, and faithful of the several dioceses and institutions under my direct archpastoral oversight during these unusual times of global pandemic. Over the past several weeks, you have received a number of directives from me and from the Holy Synod. This message is not such a directive, but simply a word to you, a word of encouragement in these difficult days of the coronavirus crisis, and a personal word to reassure you of my prayers for each of you. Our Lenten journey has taken quite a different trajectory, and certainly all of us are missing the divine services that we would normally be serving or attending, as well as the fellowship that we would enjoy during this time. I myself have been quarantined here at the Chancery for the past two weeks and have been watching the live streamed services primarily from the Holy Transfiguration Monastery in Elwood City. In spite of the challenges, I have been enjoying this time of quiet as well as a wide range of frozen foods I have stocked up on. Many of you are in similar situations and I can certainly understand if Many of you are sad or disappointed that we are temporarily unable to lead or participate in the services. I also know that some of you may be dealing with illness in your own families or be worried about family and friends who are working in healthcare professions or other necessary services. My own brother, who is in charge of technology services at a college in Ohio, is at work helping them set up online classes and my sister is working at a downtown Columbus hospital. We should be sure to offer our prayers for strength and good courage to the many who are working under these frightening circumstances, as well as for the health and recovery of those who are presently afflicted with the virus and the eternal rest of those who have already lost their lives. These are sobering realities for us to reflect upon, and they are the main reason for our present state of the temporary closure of public divine services. I have been in daily dialogue with my brothers on the Holy Synod, and as announced, the Holy Synod will meet again on this coming Monday to review and reassess where we stand and where we are going. Of course, all of us are wondering what might be possible for Holy Week and Pascha and how we might be able to mark those very crucial days for us as Orthodox Christians. I will inform you in a timely manner about all decisions taken by the Holy Synod and by the Metropolitan Council, which will be meeting on Tuesday of this coming week. Of course, we know that no matter what, our Lord will go through his voluntary passion. He will die and he will rise in glory on the third day. No virus or civic directive can prevent this. However, we do need to be wise about the manner in which we, as a Christian community, can mark these life-changing events in the context of this present crisis. I am confident that we will continue to arrive at those helpful decisions and directives that will both ensure the safety, health, and life of our clergy and faithful, and give due glory to our loving and merciful God. For now, I ask you to be patient and forbearing, not only with the bishops, but with the clergy, and above all, with each other. Whether we are clergy, monastics, or faithful, it's not easy to be in quarantine, and perhaps we are not used to being around our own family members quite so much. Although it may seem that we have lost a certain balance between our private and public lives, between silence and noise, between activity and rest, we should remember that Great Lent has always been there to provide the opportunity to find that balance once again. Our task now, during this crisis, is not to become anxious, but to take those spiritual tools that we have always had at our disposal work a little on re-establishing the balance in our own hearts, and to remember with the psalmist that it is good for me to be near the Lord. By the prayers of St. John of the Latter, may we all make use of the time that has been given to us to draw closer to our Lord 
God and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank you for your prayers.